Okay, let's go back through to the time. Cool, that works. So, now let's get the case ready for it, and then we'll power it from our um, uh, from our cheap uh, power bank that we took apart. So, um, and also now, if I turn it off, power supply off, and then if I turn my power supply on, it should retain all those settings. 2108, 2108. Well, it's actually 2109. Let's just set that for posterity. There we go. Now it's correct. Are you putting your charge in the LiPo? Yes, whether it's held the charge or not is another question. <laughs> so let's assemble it. I'm just going to turn the big light back on. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> this is a one pound power bank. So uh, its ability to hold on to the charge is certainly questionable. Right, so here's our power bank, so. What I want to do now is jump on to the two power lines coming out of it. This is an SMD. Um, this is an SMD uh, USB connector. So if I get the hot air gun out, we should be able to remove that connector, and then I can solder some jumper leads, these guys, onto the USB output from it. Yeah, basically that, Hugh. So let's put that guy to one side a sec. Let's unplug my crop clips. And I'll just move the power supply crop clips out of the way before I blow something up on them. So now the game is I need to do this without applying 400 uh, Celsius to a charged LiPo battery. Hmm. How much work is it to remove the LiPo cell for a moment? That's not really very much work, and I'll be a lot more comfortable if I do that. Let's turn on the soldering iron again. So let's remove this controller board from the power bank battery. There we go. So now I can put the LiPo battery to one side. And... Let's crop clip this guy up. And let's get the hot air gun and give it the beans. 430 of them, I think. Right, so this is the hot air gun that is dishing out uh, hot air at 430 degrees and we're going to melt the solder with a lot of hot air. Whoop, there we go. Oh, uh, we certainly could do. Once we've got the wires all hooked up, we'll, we'll have some fun with it. Okay. Now, do I want to connect these now? Now, I need to poke these through the case. We really need to build the case first because I can't put the battery inside the case. That is a restriction of the current setup. What I should have done, I should have purchased a small LiPo cell that was like one of the flat ones, a flat cell, and then connected it up to uh, that controller that I've just lost somewhere. Oh, it's on in the helping hands. Um, I might do that later on, and then I'll have a flat battery along the back of it. That'd be kind of cool. How hot is the air coming out of that? It is 430 degrees Celsius. I can adjust it up to 480 if I want to, but we'll start tearing up the board at that kind of temperature. 
Um, okay, right, we don't need that. I've got to build the case. We've got to do the boring bit, unfortunately. I'm quite excited. I think this is going to look really nice when it's finished. I hope the battery actually powers it for a significant amount of time, because if this goes well, I will actually use this clock in my shop, because my shop does not have a clock. There we go. So that is going to go in there. Just going to stretch all that through. Ugh. Oh no. I don't like the way that's fitting. Oh. Ooh. That's just about okay. I think that's possible. I think that's going to be okay. We've got to do that side first to poke those buttons through. Uh, feed these around. This is all a little bit messy, but we're nearly there. There we go. It's in the box. It's contained. And I've forgotten to put the stupid film in there. <sighs> deep breaths, deep breaths. Do I need to cut that to shape? I bet I do. Oh. Oh, nightmare. I do. They did not even cut the film to shape. That's nightmarish. Okay. That's fine. I can deal with this situation. We have the technology. I'm going to bring in my um, extremely technical hot air soldering surface, which is not the top of a busted hard drive. Okay, right. So, how tall were those again? 35 mil, did I say? 35 mil. And we're going to do this completely by eye. Nah, there we go. That doesn't look remotely straight. I think it'll do, though. Uh, right, that's more like it. Now let's make it a bit shorter. Take off about that much. The glare on this screen is going to be atrocious. You won't actually be able to see what's on it. You'll only be able to see your reflection in it. It's my prediction. Okay, right. How do I attach these two together now? There. And... Oh no! This one's upside down. Okay. I, I can fix that. I can fix that in situ. It's fine. Going death or glory here. Oh, there's so many fingerprints. It'll do. It'll be okay. Right. This one needs to go upside down because the screw hole is there, but that bit is there. So I need to invert that. So if we take that screw out. Take that side off and flip it over. Ah. Undo. Ah, oh, this this is fiddly. What's worse than fumbling with something? It's watching someone else fumble with something. I hope you're enjoying the show. There we go. That goes back in. And now the last one can go on top. Hopefully without 
dropping the nut inside the case and having to very awkwardly shake it all out. There we go. Hey, you did it, Helketh. Well done. Luckily, we have spare nuts. I have uh, I have a couple of spare nuts. Right, there we go. It's all cased up. Look at that. I wonder if those buttons are doing stuff while it's powered off. That'll be annoying. Okay. Now let's solder these to our LiPo control board. Uh, where's my circuit? There it is. It's that. Right. Well, that's interesting. Oh, that's fine. I was very confused for a moment. I thought the battery was labelled the wrong way around. I was going to get very, very confused. Let's get in a bit closer. Whoops. Right, am I still warmed up? Yep, the soldering iron is still hot. So... That's our negative and that's our positive. I'm going to tin these leads. And I'm gonna put some nice leaded solder onto the board. And we're going to put our minus rail on there. Now I'm going to cut those, I'm going to trim those short actually. Use the big pad as well. I could, you're right. Um, I could. I'm not going to though because I don't need to. I'm going to keep it nice and even. One. And two, that needs more solder on it. Ow, that's very hot. I'm gonna put a bit more solder on that. And it's gonna come off. There we go. And I'm just going to check for shorts there just because I've put quite a big blob of solder on that. So where's the multimeter? Multimeter into continuity mode, which is beep mode. So it beeps when the probes touch. So B minus should beep on contact with this one, which it does, and it shouldn't beep with this one which it doesn't. Happy days. Allmot2000, thank you for that follow. How's it going? I don't think, I don't think I've ever had that. Yeah, I think that's the only follow we've had tonight. Hopefully I haven't been able to. Focus is off, sorry about that. Let's sort that out. Whoop. Hopefully I haven't missed out any other follows tonight. There we go. Right. Now we've got to put our um, our battery back on. And I have to make sure that I don't short everything out with the helping hands while I do this. What's on the other side of the board from there? Lots of stuff. Okay. That's our... Uh, so this side of the board is a, uh, a DC boost circuit. So the LiPo cell is running at 3.7 volts. And this circuit boosts that up to 5 volts. Uh, that chip also handles charging of the battery. So that's what that lot is all doing. Right. And I think I might have to do this floating. Oh, no. I can... Um, yeah, I don't know. i tell you where I could hold it, actually. We might be able to grab hold of just the wires. That should give me just nothing. No, we're going to have to do this just flat on the board. Anywhere else and I risk shorting something out because the battery is going to be live when we put it on there. So that's going to that's gonna be a bit naff. Right, let's go down here. 
So firstly, I'm going to take, I'm going to mix in some fresh solder with these big, with this big blobby. This is horrible stuff, this. Let's try and get that off the board. I'm just going to wipe that off and put some nice leaded stuff on. There we go. Look at that lovely shiny. Get rid of that muck. Right. Okay. Um, oh, no. Oh, we're okay. For a moment, I was like, I have no idea what's the negative end of the battery. And then I realized. Okay. Right. So this is where I start a lipo fire. Get you on there. It's one. And I'm just going to bend that pin slightly just so it sits right. Lost my music. It's gone very quiet all of a sudden. Video paused. Get out of here. Bloody YouTube. Right. There we go. It lives. Okay, so that's all live now. And we now have a LiPo battery powering our clock. Minus three degrees in here, apparently. Not sure about that. <laughs> right. Start out the focus. There we go. Right. No, we did not maintain the time properly. That was probably me messing around with the buttons while it was off. Let's set the clock again. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, 21.35. Uh, I'm going to set this to 12 o'clock because then the worst thing that it can work well, 12 01 that's good enough huh yeah let's go through all of this oh I see what that is that's the temperature offset adjustment okay uh, still Thursday. Oh, uh, damn it. Okay. Oh, hang on a sec. We can figure this out. Let me grab my thermocouple. Plus minus in the right hole. It's 21 degrees in here. we go. Don't know what that means. Let's set that to 12. Oh, of course, there's the date, isn't there? So 12, and it is the 13th day. Thursday, 21 degrees. There we go, we got there in the end. Done. More heat shrink over that power bank, probably. Um, yeah. Have I got any? Have I got any? I might have some. Let me have a quick, let me have a quick hunt around. Do do do. Aha. Oh, it's the stuff I've got is too big. Don't, I think that's gonna be too big. We'll try it. Let's see if that'll work. Expert cutting, go. See if we can heat shrink up the power bank. Trying to rip me off, yeah. That's right, I can't believe that a second hour one costs that much. So yeah, I think he's taking you for a ride there. Right, I'm not sure if this stuff's going to be too big. We'll find out. Uh, hot air on, 200 degrees. Oh, actually, 
hot air off and take the nozzle off. Hot air on. Okay. This is the fun bit. There we go, that'll do it. That's a little bit more secure now. There we go, one battery powered clock. And that, I'll, I'll probably just hot snot that onto the back or something. Job's a good one. So that was a one pound power bank that we've just turned into a nice LiPo battery to power our clock, which is super cool. Nice. Right. That's literally everything I planned on doing tonight. So the last thing, let me think. So is there anything else that's cool that we can do with this? Anything else that we cool? How will I charge the power bank? Uh, through the USB micro port that's still on it. So we can just plug that bad boy in. Test it. Yes, that's a good point actually. We might have to disconnect the clock to charge the power bank. I don't know. Let me find another power bank with which to charge the power bank. Temperature is rising. <laughs> is the battery level rising? It, the temperature may have raised because I was belting this area with hot air. Okay, right, here we go. Aha! Uh -huh. The power bank says it's charging, the light has gone to red, and it's drawing 800 milliamps. It's charging. Oh, you guys can't see that. Hang on a minute. There we go. So it's drawing 750 milliamps, and that's dropping off because the cells should theoretically be full already. So yeah, the circuitry is getting hot. Uh, no, the circuitry is not getting hot. It's because I was belting it with 250 degree air to, to um, uh, melt the hot the heat shrink. So yeah, hold oh, the power bank. Maybe. Hmm. Difficult to get in there. I can't get anything in there without risking shorting it out. It'll be all right. It's only gonna be passing a tiny amount of current. Yeah, I'd have to leave it for a while. I'm sure it'll be all right. This thing is, well, let's find out how much it's drawing. Oh, I'd have to desolder it to find out how much it's drawing. I don't wanna do that. Actually, I could resolder it. Oh, why do you guys make me do these things? <laughs> Who wants to find out how much power the, the, the clock uses? Let's find out how much power the clock uses. <laughs> right. How are we going to measure how much power this uses? Am I going to... I don't want to desolder one of those wires because I've just heat shrunk this. I could snip the wire and then solder it back together again. Or, how hard is it to open up the back? Two screws, that's very easy. And then I can desolder from the back of it. That'll do it. Right, soldering iron back on. So we've got to wait for a, got to wait a minute for the soldering iron to warm back up again. And then what we'll do is we'll desolder this one and we'll solder another jumper cable in line so I can put my multimeter in circuit and measure the current usage. And then we can see how much power uh, the clock is consuming. And if we're feeling really smart, we can then make an estimate as to how long the battery should theoretically last. So let's find out. Uh, right, while that warms up, I'm going to grab another jumper lead. 
Have a route around. Oh, there we go. That looks in good condition. Jabol, 2005, with the follow. Thank you very much. How are you doing? Ugh. Just stripping some wire back here. Okay. Right, let's desolder this without shorting it out against the soldering line. Ah. Uh, my soldering line is. Oh no! A million points to anyone who knows what's wrong with this situation. We'll short it out. We're gonna have to risk it. We're gonna have to risk it. Basically, the problem is this is this is live at five volts, and this will be mains grounded, which means we're about to short a five volt line to mains earth, which will short the power bank out. That's the problem. However, the power bank should be able to take a short amount of uh, a short short. So let's just be quick. There we go. It'll be okay. That's not ideal, but it'll be fine. Right. Let's wire that in. But yeah, these are little things you've got to watch out for when you're soldering onto something that might be live. And you've got to remember that, as I say, your soldering iron, that's metal, that's probably grounded. So you've got to watch out what you're attaching grounds to sometimes. Okay. Right, so the power bank is currently off because there's no draw. So now, let's uh, move some stuff about. Bring the multimeter back into frame. Yeah. Oh, taping an earth pin. Oh, man. Does anyone do that? Oh, I just realized cottoned on to what you meant when you said taping the earth pin. That's gross. Ugh. Right, let's put this on, um, let me see, 600 milliamps. I'm gonna put this on the amperage range just for safety. And we'll go to the, go to the uh, amp range. And I need some crocodile clips for this, actually. I'm going to swap out to my crocodile clips. Excuse me while I jumble some cables about. Yes. Um, however, if you're probing mains with an oscilloscope, you should be using um, differential probes, which cost a fortune, though. So I can understand how, why people take shortcuts. Right, I can never remember which way round you're supposed to do this. I think live goes to the power live. There we go. Has it kept the time, I wonder? 12.13? Oh, that's the date, isn't it? Thursday. 21.46. No, it's drifting a bit, but whatever. Okay, so 37 milliamps. That's very low power. That's pretty good. And we should see, if it goes on to a small digit, Let's cycle through. If we go to the day of the month, the power usage goes down because less of the LEDs are on. However, that's very low. That's very low indeed. Um, that's, that's in, um, I mean, like anything under 40 milliamps, you actually risk the power bank going to sleep. So that's, uh, that's super low. The, the, the battery, this 18650 battery, uh, it, well, according to the box, it's 2600 milliamp hours. Um, so, um, I'm getting tired and I don't want to do the maths on that. Um, so that could provide two, uh, that could provide 2,600 milliamps for one hour. Um, and we're using, uh, a tenth, a hundredth of that. So we can do that. So theoretically, 120 hours, something like that. We should have a runtime of about 120 hours. So, 
if we get a calculator out, calc 120 divided by 24, so that'd be five days. Now it uses a bit more power when it's on the clock. It actually du almost doubles when it's on the clock, but I reckon we probably get about at least five days out of that battery, assuming it's actually 2,600 milliamp hours. So that's not bad. You know, I could charge that every couple of days. I might put it to the test. Ooh, let's put this back together and then I think we're about done. Did I turn the soldering iron off? No, I didn't, good. Whoop. Okay, here we go. I want to do this in one smooth motion. That wasn't too bad. Phew. Okay. There, so let's put that back together, and then after that, I think we're now done. Oh yeah, there was one last thing I was going to do. I wanted to look at the multiplexing. How are we doing? We've still got a couple of people here, and the time... We're coming up to three hours of live time. Um, let's do one more thing. Let's let's find out how fast the multiplexing is. That's That would be a cool thing to know. So before we put it back together, let's find out how quickly it's multiplexing. So what the flicker rate on it is. Uh, so for that, I'll put that to one side. For that, I need my oscilloscope. Don't get excited, it's not a real one. However, it is one that I built on stream once upon a time. Right. So. Let's turn that back over again. And... I'm going to hook in, I'm going to solder in a ground lead for that. So let's solder on to just the battery ground. Uh, is there a better battery ground to solder on to? Not really. Ten kilohertz? Yeah, probably. Okay, I've got a ground reference. Now I need to get power onto my oscilloscope. And I don't have a proper power system for this, so I need to get my crop clips set up. There we go. Yeah, if you like this, there's lots of YouTube channels that do this kind of work, but it's good fun to watch this. Okay, let's go down to 10 microseconds. And let's go, let's probe at one volt. Let's see what we can find. That's something there. Let's see if I can adjust the position of this so you guys can see what I'm doing. There we go. What about the middle pin? Okay, so that's got our five volt reference on it. Let's slow that down. Is there something? There's something there. At 350 hertz. Oh, there we go. There's a nice pretty square wave. Right, so what we're seeing now, uh, yes, you're not far off the truth, Hellkith. Right, so what we're looking at here is the microcontroller, that's this chip here. Um, because this only has so many pins, it doesn't have enough pins on it to connect to every pin on the display because the display has, um, it has eight lights per digit and four digits. So it has 32 points of light on it um, that this thing needs to switch on and off. And this thing doesn't have enough pins to do all of that. So what it does is it only lights up one of the, dis one of the digits at a time. And these guys here, these transistors, there, 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 and there, these transistors switch the, dis the displays in. So it, goes, so it chases down it. And what we're seeing there is the pulse of that display being switched on and it's switching through them at 346 hertz. So 346 times a second, it changes which digit of the display is lighting up. 
and if we slowed it down fast enough you would actually see it going and you would actually see it doing it but it's doing it at 350 times a second which is too fast for the naked eye or even a camera to be able to see so there we go and yeah as Anno says it uses persistence of vision so that's that so let's see if there are any other fun signals here that we can look at let's see if we can find the clock signal here very low level Right, what did you reckon the clock was going to be, Anno? 32 kilohertz, you reckon, didn't it? Didn't you? And, ooh. Can I get a stable lock on that? It's kind of bouncing about a bit. I think that might just be my probing, but 32 kilohertz. Yep, 32.768. <laughs> my, my oscilloscope isn't accurate enough. What if I go to a very... It's difficult to tell. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, there it is. There it is. We got a lock. It's very hard to pick up. It's a very low signal, but it's there. That's the beat of the clock, basically, at 32,000 times a second. Um, so let's see if we can find that on the chip. Oh, there we go. There's the clean signal. Although, again, it's it wobbles. It wobbles all over the place. But then this thing is not exactly a, a sci yeah. It's not exactly a scientific instrument, is it? Did I just kill it? Oh. Yes, I'm killing it by shorting it to ground now, I think. Because for a moment we get a clean signal, then look how it fades out there. So yeah, however, that was the clock. What's on there? Uh, there's 1.5 volts, so that's just power into the chip. Ah, there's our data line. Uh, see if we can get some kind of lock on that. So this is um, this is a serial data line. This is the CPU. This is the microcontroller talking to the clock chip. And so what we're seeing here, and they're talking to each other via a serial line, which is basically a glorified Morse code. So what you're seeing there is the little signals of them just going, and they're literally just bound. It's literally just polling it, saying, "What is the time? What is the time? What is the time? What is the time?" And that's what that is doing. And what you're seeing there is the little flashes of data going back and forth to the chip. Uh, let's see if we can get a lock on that. Kind of. So this oscilloscope isn't sophisticated enough to be able to decode that. However, if I had a fancy oscilloscope with serial decoding, we could actually decode the data in that little data stream there and find out what, what, date, what numbers are in there. Cool. Let's see if we can find anything else. There's another one. Ah, I lied. That's the data stream. Okay, right, so what we've got, this is the clock between the two chips. So when they're talking to each other over serial, they have to have a clock so they know uh, how fast you're counting. So, because if you're going to send a signal where you're going to say, I'm going to send X number of words within a second, I need to know how long a second is. So this is simply the clock showing, so you can see that those are, oh, you can see that those are all roughly even, give or take. Whereas that one there, see if we can capture, let's go, let's trigger that a sec. There we go. So whereas you can see that is actually a jumble of information. So there's the actual stuff. Uh, yes, tapped directly into the data stream. See, when you're hacking hardware, this is real hardware hacking. Now we're not, I mean, this is incredibly simple, but when you want to hack a device, when you want to reverse engineer it, if you've got the latest and greatest console and they need to crack the console to figure out how the DRM works, how to run a pirated game, this is what they're doing. 
they're using an oscilloscope to see how the chips are talking to each other and what they're saying to each other. And yeah, this is how mod chips work. So um, let's go back into auto mode a sec. Let's see if we can find any other cool information. There's something else there. So there's some more information. I don't know what any of this is. I'd have to look up the um, I'd have to look up the data sheets for the pin. So if we looked up the data sheet chip for this um, for this pin, the data sheet for this chip, we could find out what each pin is, and it would tell us this one is the clock pin, this one is the data in pin, this is the data out pin, and so on. Uh, what about that one? That's ground. There's no one at home there. So, uh, so what about the microcontroller? Can we find any cool info there? Five volts. There's something. That looks. That looks like. So that is an output pin. So as you can see, we've got the 346 hertz clock. And we've got a square wave coming out of that. So that is going to be one of the LED. Uh, that is an LED line there, and it's triggering it at um, uh, with a uh, uh, with a 346 hertz square wave. So that will be one of the digits there. We'll probably find there's a whole load of those. There's another one. There's another one. There's another one. What's that? That looks like just five volts. Five volts. There's something else. Not sure what that is. It's at a fairly high hertz. That might be a data line. There's a couple of those. There's another LED output. Can we find the data line coming from the clock chip, I wonder? Ground. I want to see that data line at the other end. That'd be fun. Oh, that's floating. Not sure what that is. It's probably going to be over here, actually. Ooh, there's something alternating. Whatever that is, it's changing. Oh, I know what that is. That's the second indicator. Remember the second divider. So you've got hours, sorry, hours and minutes, and we've got the flashing, uh, the flashing cursors between them. We can actually see the blinking dots there. Yeah. So that's alternating between on and off. So that's pretty cool. That's a that's a fun one. Uh, can I do anything? Um, theoretically, I could. Um, I don't. We, again, the oscilloscope isn't sophisticated enough. However, if we had a posh oscilloscope that had serial decoding and we could see the data, we could conversely inject data into it as well. So what we could do is connect up a computer and say to the computer, in between the other stuff, inject the following data. and We could send information to the chips. So, um, so yes, that's how you would get started with that. And again, a mod chip is all about uh, intercepting data from one chip it's on awesome its way to another and modifying it. So, and since I haven't uploaded any whoops, music or new intermission. So that's that. So yeah, I'm not sure where the data lines from the clock chip are going to. They're going to one of those, I'm not sure which, but I think that sums up everything. Oh, here's a fun one we could do. Uh, let's check out the light sensor. Ah, that's what that floating one was. Okay, so the light sensor here. So we've got uh, our average is 1.4 volts. Now watch what happens when I cover up the light sensor. Not a lot, actually. Oh, that was very boring. I thought that was going to be more interesting than that. I was hoping for something more exciting there. What happens if I shine a light into it, I wonder? Not amplified, yeah. Let's try shining a strong light onto it. See if we get anything from it, that'd be fun. Oh, look at that. If I shine a light at it, it goes low. 
So that's where it's detecting. So it's actually already in a very low state there. That's almost as low as it goes. And if it's put under a very strong light, it goes very low. And conversely, if we just turn the thing over, so there's the brightness. And if I shine the light at it, it does basically nothing. Oh, I thought I was supposed to change brightness. Oh, I don't see the point in that at all. I thought it was going to get brighter and dimmer. That's boring. Yes, it is a resistor, but we can see the voltage drop across it, basically. Uh, yes. Cool. Um, right, the thermistor, that's boring. We'd have to heat that up. Um, I think that's all the information we can get from this. I think we've probed all the interesting bits we can. And I think we've seen all the useful information we can see from that. So, um, I think we're about done. I think I've done everything I can do with this thing. Hmm. Yeah, okay, I'm going to put the covers back on. All right, let me just take off my uh, ground fly lead. Okay. Right, <clears throat> okay, it's time for me to go because I've got to go and pick up a Kimbo. So we're going to wrap up now. Yeah. So thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in. This has been good. This has been good. I've been happy with how all this has gone. That was all, that all went very well for me. So uh, I'm gonna quickly find someone to throw you at. I'm gonna do a quick host and run because I got a jet. And yeah, that is indeed how you build a clock. So thanks for tuning in, everyone. Uh, let me quickly see who's about. Uh, yeah, there will be more of this because I've got more kits to do. So let's check the stuff out. Oh. It's also three minutes slow. Yeah, that's probably where I've been messing around with it. I'll leave it to run over the next couple of days and see how well it actually keeps the time. However, where I've been probing it and poking it and prodding it, I'm not surprised it's gone off a little bit. That doesn't surprise me in the least. Okay, right. Um, I'm going to send you all back over to a Linden, I think. So I will see you guys later on. We're going to do a quick host. I'm going to do a host and run on Linden. So drop in and say hello. And uh, I will see you guys in the future. Stay tuned to my Twitter and stuff for news on when I'm streaming. You know where to find me. And I'll see you all soon. Bye for now, everyone. Cheerio.